So here we have the latest tool that we received for the Mad Scientist Hut. It's an LPKF 91S VS. Um, it's a prototyping machine for making dual-sided copper boards. Um, this has the uh, variable speed 60,000 RPM um, spindle on it, which is a very nice spindle, and it has a top changer to open the collet. You can replace the uh, bits inside by spinning this part and pushing it down. That way you don't have to set a set screw or anything in here, which would cause a vibration on such a high-speed machine. But what we're doing is uh, testing it today, and uh, I've already made this board and had it fabricated, and um, you can see, try and focus on it. that it does a pretty good job uh, making the exact same circuit just by cutting it out of the copper. It's kind of hard to get good light on this. So what I have here is a laptop with uh, Windows XP installed on it. Come on, focus. And uh, I have the Boardmaster and Circuit Cam software that LPKF um, sells with these machines. And the, the Boardmaster software is what controls the LPKF and tells it where to cut and what speed to set the spindle to and everything else. And then the Circuit Cam software actually takes the design and cams around the the um, circuit so that you can cut the board where you need to. So normally you run this machine with the vacuum running so it keeps the spindle cool but for quick demonstration I'm just going to have it go over the circuit again and uh, show you how it runs. So I select a all plus on the milling bottom and it's going to go and mill all this green stuff that's on the screen. So I hit the start button the spindle is set up to run at 30,000 RPM at 6 millimeters per second. Uh, I could be running at a lot higher speed but there's no reason to run it that fast. So I hit the start button and you can hear the spindle kick on. The milling bit that I have in here is a 0.5 millimeter carbide two fluted bit. Um, it does a pretty good, decent job for cutting through this copper. And normally I'll cut the board two or three times, the same pattern over the same area on the board, but, and I'll sand in between the um, cuttings. That way I'm guaranteed to clear out all the copper in between the traces. As it's going along on, on the board itself, you can go over to the screen and watch it actually get it focus here. You can actually see where the uh, milling bit is at on the board by looking at the screen. If you watch the screen it turns dark green where it's actually cutting. LPKF's done a nice job of making the software work very well. It's uh, This machine's from 1998 so it's pretty archaic uh, interface for the software, but it works very well. Oh, and also, 
we just got this uh, a couple days ago, and when I powered it up, it didn't do anything. And the plug was set correctly here for 120 volts. So I ended up taking the electronics box apart and trying to figure out what's going on with the machine. And um, this was from Singapore, and they had wired it to run at 200 volts. They took the machine apart and wired the transformer instead of flipping this little plug. They actually desoldered the connections on the transformer and rewired the transformer to run at 220, which I had to undo so we could run it at 120. Um, the other thing with this was the spindle. Um, lubricant was pretty dry since this thing had been in storage for probably 10 or 15 years. And um, I had to relubricate the spindle. What would happen with the dry lubricant was the spindle would turn on and run fine for just a few minutes. And then it would just shut off. There's some kind of internal temperature cutoff switch inside the spindle because the voltage was going into the spindle correctly, but the spindle wasn't turning, which I thought was a bad spindle. Um, it actually was a good spindle, it just had to be really lubricated. Um, there's companies out there that'll do a lubrication job on these spindles for about twelve to fourteen hundred dollars, but all I did was cleaned it out with a little WD-40 and then re-oiled it with some three-in-one, but um, I'm gonna have to lubricate it quite often since it doesn't have the synthetic high viscosity lubricant that's required in it. But um, anyways, it's a very nice machine and does a very good job at cutting boards. Also, since I'm testing this, I'm not using the location pins on the board. Uh, normally, you'd have the board drilled, so it's using these location pins that are on both ends of the board. And um, what that allows you to do is it allows you to flip the PCB over and the machine will know exactly where it needs to cut at. So right now it's saying the life of the tool is over. Do you want to replace it? I'm going to say no. So it'll just continue on what it was doing. You can program how long it'll use a, a milling bit for before you can change it. So you, it'll keep track of how many millimeters or inches the tool is cut. So if you get a dull, dull tool, you won't destroy your printed circuit board, and you can just replace the bit before before the end of the tool life. But um, anyway, so as I was saying before, that you can flip the board over exactly in the middle, and the um, the um, tool will know exactly how to line up to do the second side of the board when you flip it over. So, anyways, uh, I'm excited about this new tool. So, I hope you found something useful in this video. And uh, thank you for watching.